I'm gonna try again. Yep. Okay, after a few um, stop and go, I'm gonna try again. Um, Brexit, 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 yes. Mark that one. Okay, guys, good evening. Um, apparently, I've been having some issues with my Wi-Fi tonight, even though there's two Wi-Fis, but um, of course, there's some little hiccup, hiccup there. Um, nevertheless, still, I will um, persevere and I will carry on amidst, against the odds, you know. But anyhow, I want to say good evening. All the way from London, Silburn City earlier, Mark, Renaissance, Jacqueline, Fern. Tanya Cameron. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Awesome. The United Kingdom is divided. The United Kingdom is um, it's concerning in regards to this whole Brexit thing, Brexit factor there. Um, R-E-S-P-C-T, the Prime Minister said there has been complete disrespect to her and the country over how the EU has been actually speaking and how the UK has been operating after her meeting yesterday. And how they actually, you know, cheat her bad. And I remember when David Cameron also went to the, the EU and how they also treated him bad. And I say this, and I'm not making any, you know, you know, mincing my words in regards to this. I said this is some of the key reasons why the UK need to leave the EU ASAP, as soon as possible. Because they're not going to make it very a successful Brexit. Why? Because they do not want it to be good. They do not want to set a precedent that others may follow, right? And the Prime Minister is very adamant about that, that she, she had to make a speech today. And um, I'm going to see if I can find a speech which she, which she mentioned. It's a very um, short speech, but she made it very clear of the level of disrespect that she had. Uh, I'll, I'll just play it for you the other side's proposals without a detailed explanation throughout this process. Yes. I have treated the EU with nothing but respect. The UK expects the same. A good relationship at the end of this process depends on it. At this late stage in the negotiations, it is not acceptable to simply reject the other side's proposals without a detailed explanation and counter-proposals. So we now need to hear from the EU what the real issues are and what their alternative is so that we can discuss them. Until we do, we cannot make progress. In the meantime, we must and will continue the work of preparing ourselves for no deal. Okay, Prime Minister said, preparing ourselves for no deal. You know? Now, I think the question that I ask is that this United Kingdom, this, this country, um, was one which, you know, stand by their leaders, stand by their um, the leadership, and when others come against them, they rise up against the nation, come as one. And... I've been just listening to some of the, the, the rhetorics, um, some of the different discussions coming from Europe. Um, I, 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 I post this statement today that will the Brits stand together? Once upon a time, the Brits would stand together against enemy forces and those who disrespect the leadership of such nation. You know, um, you know as a result of that, they refute all the likes of Churchill, Okay, there's been a checkered pass with the, the UK, right? Okay, there's been a checkered pass with the colonial empire. But at the same time, you got many people who live in this country. And as a result of that, want to see something which is good and what is beneficial 
for this nation. Now, there's a 17 million people voted to leave the EU. The 17 million, okay? And the other side of, 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 well, of 16 million or so, uh, not really all of them, and I say to you, not really all of them are actually saying there need to be a referendum. Forces want to be rec uh, another referendum. Many are saying that we should just really scrap this foolishness and just stay in Europe, just chill and nice and just relax. Bankers are actually worried. People are actually worried. Persons from the EU are actually worried. And I'm saying, worried about what? Is it worried about the fact that the, the cushion is going to go? Is it worried about the fact that one don't respect the democratic process? The democratic process is there for a reason, right? People voted, and as a result of that, um, the result is there. Now, I saw this one, and this one really made my blood boil, <laughs> not literally, you know? When it said, and this is, this is what it said, ladies and gentlemen, you know? And it says, two EU leaders call for second Brexit referendum. Two EU leaders call for second Brexit referendum. Now, why does Czech Republic and Malta call in for a second referendum? I tell you what I said. This is what I said. I said, these uncircumcised Philistines. <laughs> and I said, this is one of the top reasons why the UK need to leave the EU now. Right? Because this is the same reason why many, many people say people vote to leave the EU by virtue of um, racism or um, immigration. But I tell you that many people voted to leave the EU because of this exact reason. And it's reflected here, whereby you have other nations actually trying to dictate to the UK as to what they should do. Right? Two EU leaders call for a second Brexit vote, referendum on Brexit. How dare they? But I say this to you. If they dare do another referendum, you're going to get 20 million people who will be voting for Brexit, right? Because at the end of the day, the UK need to stand its ground. Andrew Jevis, Czech leader, and Joseph Muscat, Maltese Prime Minister, insisted Britain would change its mind if a second vote was called on the terms of Theresa's May deal. So therefore, what I say to you, if any leader that you have in your country, wherever you are, what you need to do today, if you do not like it, call for another vote. Call for another referendum. And by calling such, you're actually seeking to get the results that you desire. It's either you want to get the results you desire or you're going to respect the democratic process. It's simple as that. Call for what you desire by keep voting and keep voting and keep voting till you get what you want or respect the decision. And that's what it is, respect in the decision, whereby you have other leaders interfering in the democratic process. It is like what they say, America and Russia, where Russia is intervening in how the elections are running. Now you've got, when Tam and Barack Obama came, said that the UK would be last in the queue, right? In this case, you've got other leaders trying to tell the UK what to do. So I say, this is the, this is the situation, that's it. We're leaving. <laughs> and you know what? I believe this is a time where the UK, this is a time where people need to come together and stand behind the leadership. If you notice, I use the word leadership. Leadership doesn't mean to say you're going to stand behind everything that the prime minister is actually doing. You're not going to go into oblivion. But based on the leadership coming together, I believe at this moment, you know what should be happening? We're about the leaders, Labour, uh, Conservative, uh, Lib Dems, UKIP, whatever, S the leaders sit with in a table now and say, listen, this is a question. Are you respecting the, the decision of the people? Will you respect the decision? And if they respect the decision of the people, then they say, well, this is what we do now. Let's work together as a plan how we're going to leave effectively. Because at the end of the day, and I respect this, that if there is um, such a, a, a thin margin between the Remainers and those who voted for Brexit, then one has to take in consideration the Remainers and the concerns that they have. 
for there to be an effective Brexit. But if there's to be a Brexit, then such a Brexit must be very effective. There must be a clean break. Of course, you're going to have deals. You're going to have arrangements because at the end of the day, every country in the world have bilateral deals, WTO, and all these different deals where people actually work towards in order to have effective trade, effective relationship. And the UK um, have that with the EU, with different nations, have that with the USA, have that with Brazil, have that with Africa, have that with China, and have that with CARICOM. Have that. So therefore, there are all these all over the place. But one of the things which I will not tolerate, and many people will not tolerate, is simply this simple process. It's leave, right? If you want to destabilize the, the, the process, destabilize the democratic process, then I believe that is actually treading on a dangerous ground. It's my, like, I'm not a fan of let Sadi Khan, but I respect the democratic process. But if Sadiq Khan is saying that we should have a second referendum because people change their mind, well, many people have changed their mind about Sadiq Khan because he's not very effective as a mayor of London. So what we do, we do have an election now. Okay, many people will say, well, actually, Silburn, there's four slash five years between a mayor or a member of parliament or a government. So therefore, we know we can change them eventually. Something like Brexit, where we leave the EU, oh, that is something more deeper. I say it's deeper. Yes, it's deeper. Deeper for good or deeper for bad? Deeper for good is whereby the UK now will have no choice but to actually survive. UK will have no chance, no choice but to actually excel. You know, there are times when you have no choice. When there's only one way, then what you got to do, you work with that way. Right? Uncharted opportunities, which are out there, which is come with uncharted territories, right? Where people are saying the unknown. But guess what? Aren't we as people love the unknown, love the challenges? Or are we very fickle whereby we want to see what we are doing before? What is going to happen? You can't see what is going to happen. No matter what, even if you go into a job tomorrow, a new job, it is an unknown factor. There is unknown entities, right? And... Uh, so, so with all these discussions and and uh, and 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 some of the 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 the, the views which which uh, many people are saying, um, things like uh, the poll was so close at last referendum, and many of the British diaspora were excluded from the vote. I don't know where that come from. People say some stupidness. It's only correct. It should be given another polls. Plus, now people are actually aware of the facts and figures of what may be. The poll was so close at last referendum and many of the British diaspora were excluded, right? And therefore, as a result of that, give a second vote. Listen, at the end of the day, you know when there's voting should take place. Voting take place at this time and, and the, the polls close at this time. So what do you do? Just because 10 or 20 person might be excluded, what do you do? It's not good. So therefore, let's do it all over again. That defies the whole purpose of the democratic process because the Electoral Commission sets out the rules, set out the guidelines as how things should be done. Simple as that. Um, some say second referendum for the common good. 500 million Europeans are praying for Brexit. Do you understand what it is? That is good. That is common, right? And, um, you know, so, so therefore, as far as I'm concerned, ladies and gentlemen, that's happening. We're leaving. Brexit. Simple as that. No back way. And, and, and as the Prime Minister said, the Prime Minister says, there was complete and total disrespect. Total disrespect. By the way, how um, the, the, the EU actually treated the Prime Minister today. Right? And, and as a result of that, I believe that the UK need to take a stand to walk away with a deal or no deal. And as I said, don't trust the EU. They'll stab you in your back. Former Prime Minister David Cameron experienced that. Had a hard time getting a deal from the European. And, Ther and Theresa May is finding herself in the same position. Let's just go. Right? And what they said, checkers goes pop. EU leader tears apart Theresa May Brexit blueprint. And the Prime Minister made a fundamental point. The Prime Minister said, how can you tear up something which you have not actually tested? Haven't gone through the process. Haven't been tried. It simply means that they mean the UK no good. They actually want to use the UK. Right? The UK is one of the key and poignant partner in the whole European facade. At the end of the day. It's one of the top. And, and kid you not, 
And this is what is very important for Brits to understand, the powerful position they have. But sometimes you don't know the powerful position you have if you're ignorant of the fact or ignorant of that knowledge. And that is something maybe it is not really communicated um, very much to the people. Listen, as of next week, I'm going down to the party conference in Birmingham, right? And to be there as, as an, in the world process. And here's my card. That's my, my membership card for going to the Conservative Conference next week. Right, you've got the Labour Conference this week and then the con con uh, Conservative Conference the following week. And there to really um, look at the different issues, to be there for the direction of this country, right? And, and it is so important that we all play a fundamental part in this. If, if it says go, let's go. Let's get a good deal. But if you don't get a good deal, ladies and gentlemen, simply what you do, you simply walk away. As that song says by, um, you know, Craig David, and uh, I, I, if, I can, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I can remember the song, and it, it, it is very straight, it, it is very simple, and I've always said if I could cra get Craig David to do a, a special version of it, and it simply says, I'm walking away, right? I'm walking away from troubles <laughs> in my life. And let me just play a little snippet of it, like ladies and gentlemen. On your computer, Here we go. Let me just get it. Pretty much all day. Let's go. I'm walking away. Listen to this. Simple as that. Let's just walk away. Let's just walk away. Simple as that. Walk away with a good deal or walk away with no deal. It's better a good deal than a bad deal. And if you get a bad deal, it's best to walk away. Simple as that. Many people have their versions of it, but I stand on that simple preface, and I believe people should stand on that simple preface, and a simple preface is this. The British people have voted. And if you respect the democratic process, then that is what is it. All persons need to come together, different parties, the leadership, and say, we respect the visions, the wishes of the people. I cannot buy and I cannot tolerate when people say that people did not know what they are doing. If people say they don't know what they're doing, you're actually saying that 17.5 million people were stupid and they had no sense of what was happening. That says that I was stupid and, you know, some people say, this is a, but you are acutely aware of the state of play and certainly know that it is inevitable. Present path is unsustainable and untenable. It should be done for democracy and more important for the common good. Rubbish. You know, that is reason why one should actually have a second vote. You want a second vote, simple. Anybody who wants a second vote is because they want to get the results that they want. In any election... You'll never know exactly everything which is happening. In the US election, the Jamaican election, the British election, you'll never know the end result. They come with a manifesto and they say, this is what they promise, this is what they want, right? But you never actually can actually put your hand on the head and say, this is exactly what's going to happen. Some say there was a referendum. However, the people were voting blind. And what too many people were voting on was 325 million promised to the NHS per month and hostile in environment for immigrants. There was no plan for withdrawal, and to date, there still isn't. I correct that by saying there is a plan for withdrawal. There is a plan for the, um, you know, to leave the EU, right? The simple plan was, let's leave, right? And then the process of leaving, then you work that out, right? And I say it is not accepted by some, and the EU told the Prime Minister May, the EU said, stuff it. That's what they said to the Prime Minister, right? And it's simple will either be a deal or no deal, right? And if this goes back to the vote, I kid you not, and trust me on this one, if this goes back to the vote, it will be another Brexit and it's going to be 20 million plus British subjects who will be vote to leave the EU. I kid you not, trust me. Never listen to the voice which makes a lot of noise. Always listen to the voice which is silent. And right now, the voice which is making a lot of noise is a vote for uh, a referendum. 
is a voice that is saying that we are not happy with what is happening, but there's a voice which is there. And that voice which is silent is a voice of many people who are saying, give us another opportunity, we'll suck it to them and we'll leave the EU. Many people are worried, but I tell you what, uncharted territories bring forth uncharted opportunities. And if I get into the motivational zone, and I have to be a motivational speaker, any motivational speaker will say to you, you've got to jump out. you got to jump. you got to jump, jump, jump. And if you say, oh, you just jump. And while you jump off that mountain top, right, and you, you go into the unknown, you're going to get some bruises. You're going to get some hit left, right, and center. But you'll never know the potential unless you jump. You never know the potential unless you move away from the security and the safety of the shores and go into the deep. Launch unto deep. As the scripture in the Bible says, deep call it unto deep. Right? You've got to go deeper. And this is actually, I believe this is something really powerful. I believe that this is a message also in the whole Brexit factor. Whereby one launch out into the deep. Right now, the UK is going to launch out into the deep. Funny, the UK is now trying to be independent. When the UK actually colonized many countries who are seeking and who sought their independence from the UK. And many people say they're still not independent because of the neocolonialism factor. Right? So therefore, the point is simple as this. If you want to see great success in your life, you cannot stay in the surety and the confines off the comfort zone you've got to get uncomfortable you've got to get pangs pains those are birth pains you've got to launch out into the deep deep call it onto deep you've got to see things you have never seen before so if you, you see what is happening now is this society is has become one whereby it is so protective children are being so protective these days that no one want to actually Go in. No, no one wants to take risk. Everybody's want security, that secure zone. No one wants to launch out into the deep and step into the unknown. Why do you think when you have inventions, when inventions are done or inventions are created or persons like the light bulb or whatever like that, they had to step into the unknown. They had to do something that nobody has ever done before. No one. Right? In order to be successful, the person who is successful most of the time is fixing something which well, there's a problem. Wherever there's a problem you can fix it, you're actually going to find a solution which was never found before. And that only happens by stepping into the unknown. And I believe that the UK is poised for greatness. I believe that people that stand behind whether the leadership is poised for greatness as a result of Stepping into the unknown, stepping into uncharted territories. Now, it may sound very fickle. It may sound very like, well, Silver, that is just nice for you saying, well, I'm looking at the reality. Well, I tell you what, the reality is this that you may actually be um, saving for your pension for years, but the reality is that sometimes it's not there anymore. You may go for a job, which is a nice nine to five job, but guess what? They start to restructure, they start to downsize. Within two weeks, you're gone again. No obligation to you, right? And therefore, one can say, what is a nine to five? What is a secure job anymore? Why? How can one actually have that level of assurance? Should one become, what should I say, an agency staff? An agency staff, okay, maybe have not much security, but maybe secure in the fact that they actually know what they're doing. And something else which I said, I, I said that, you know, it is not where you're coming from. People will say it is where you are going. But I change it a bit. I tweak it a bit by saying it is not where you're coming from. It's where you know you are going. That's different. Think about it for a second. It's not where you're coming from. It's where you know you are going where you know you're going. No is a sense of actually uh, a level of affirmation. You know, motivational speakers, persons in the network, marketing, whatever, they talk about having that depth of assurance, that level of depth of assurance, of understanding, of knowing, because you got a dream 
And by having that dream, then you have the, the, the vision. And from the vision, you outwork how you're going to make it happen. Because many people have visions, many people have dreams, but there are different persons who actually make it happen. And that's by being proactive and that by being active. And this is what is happening now. That's why I'm excited about Brexit. I am very excited about Brexit, right? Because I love opportunities, right? Because guess what? Really and truly, think about it for a second. Do you really think it's going to be that bad? Do you think there's going to be Armageddon? Do you think there's going to be zombies? Do you think that it's going to be chaos? You remember 2000 um, when they said it's going to be, the world is going to fall apart because of the millennium or whatever like that? Guess what? You're still there. I'm still here. Nothing happened. Zilch. Scaremongering is what has happened because many people actually have their own agendas. So many things. And you've got to be very focused and believe, and most importantly, that God is in control and God is in charge, right? So I say this to you, enjoy and look forward to unknown opportunities. Unknown opportunities. Unknown opportunities because you will never know the unknown opportunities until you step into the unknown to find such opportunities. Wow, that is so powerful. Did you get that? You never know, know the unknown opportunities until you step into the unknown to find that opportunity. Because that opportunity will always be there, but there's a wall, there's a space between, not a, not a bigly wall, not a bigly wall, but there's gonna be a wall between that. And that wall between that is the stepping over. Stepping over into that zone. Stepping over. Making a decision to move into the next level. And that is taking it to the next level. And why the EU is not so happy and keen for the UK to have a success out of Brexit is because they are fearful that other nations will do the same thing. The UK has always been a leader and must, ent and must ensure that they are a leader. And it's important that the people of the UK understand as well that they are in a leadership position. How comes this lackluster? Where does this sort of uh, pure, pure thing come from? Where is that British bulldog spirit? Where is that Churchill is saying, we will never surrender? Come on, what's going on? That's what I read about. That's what I heard. Simple as that. So therefore, let's do it. Let's get in there and Brexit with success. Simple as that. We're leaving, ladies and gentlemen. And I keep doing this to remind people and to remind persons that we're leaving. Simple as that. We're leaving. Okay? And no EU 20 uh, other nations can tell the British public what to do or tell the government what to do. But I believe very strongly that the leadership of this country, the different parties need to come around a table, need to sit down and need to simply say how we're going to do this. Get rid of the guys I'm like the Vince Cable who is talking about their life is now seeking to get a referendum and to get a new vote. All those persons, they are, and, and they're going to go. Trust me, they are going to be deselected because they are disrespecting the will of the people. And when I say the will of the people, I'm talking the democratic process because that's what democracy is. That's what an election is about. An election is simply about a process. Okay, you might not have everyone who voted for Brexit or everyone who voted for a particular leader, but the end result is the democratic process and the will of the people. The will of the people. It's a collective. Not everyone will want the same thing, but collectively, that is the decision. And such decisions need to be respected. And the government need to respect that. And the, that's what Theresa May is doing. She's a Remainer in the sense of she was campaigning on that line. That is what Corbyn need to do. That is what Vince Cable need to do. Right? That is what the leadership of the UKIP need to do. That's what um, Nicola Sturgeon need to appreciate as much as possible. Right? How it outworked, that's another thing. But they've got to respect the leadership. They've got to respect the will of the people. And until that change, we keep it like that. A second referendum is just gesture politics. It is just trying to achieve something you didn't achieve in a recent election. And you're trying to get it back. And you're trying to do as much as possible. Trying to pull the wool around the eyes. If that's the case, then you vote out every leader that came in. And you did not like them. All right. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I want to say. Just get that off my chest and I'll be campaigning and start my campaign to ensure that we leave and to follow through with the process, but not just leaving irresponsible, but leaving with, responsi with, uh, with being responsible and, and with responsibility at the same time and um, not getting into this just a politics foolishness. All right. So um, that's what I really wanted to say. And uh, this video is going out there and it is just to actually um, uh, 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 talk about the, the whole process. Uh, I'm seeing the video that I'm looking at. It's looking, it's looking very, um, uh, I don't know, it's looking very talk about the, sideways, the process. sideways or so. I don't understand how it's looking, but the, the Wi-Fi has been going a bit crazy. So um, thank you very much. And have a good night. And that's all I want to say today. Remember to like and subscribe. Silver and TV, Silver and TV, Silver and TV on Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Snapchat, uh, anything as possible. And thanks for those who attended today. And um, see you around on the other side. Bless you. Peace and out.